welcome back to Alchemy Academy. Today we're talking about high vibe food for children. It's one of my most passionate topics and I know a lot of families are struggling with this and I have struggled a lot too, but I have some really cool tips and tricks uh, how we can make mealtime fun with the kids and how we can make peace at the dinner table. My twin boys Kian and Aiden are here today and we're gonna share some really cool recipes that are some of their favorites. Crowding out is especially relevant when it comes to children. I find that making certain foods forbidden doesn't work for my kids, it only makes them want those things more. So instead I just focus on adding as much high vibe plant-based nutritious wholesome food to their daily routine and not so much focus upon what they're not allowed to eat. So by crowding out I mean just adding good things in and a lot of times my kids don't even know it. The food I offer at home is high vibe plant-based and I use a lot of different methods and tricks to get them interested. But when they go out, they make their own decisions. Just like with myself, what I care about when it comes to my kids is their habits, because it's what they do on a daily basis that matters on the long run. And as long as my kids have healthy daily habits, I can let go and loosen up when they are going out and on special occasions. Here's the dilemma. We're in a world surrounded by food-like products that are developed to be as addictive as possible and that are especially targeting children. Getting kids off to a good start is gonna have an impact for the rest of their life. However, the kids themselves are not really interested in the healthy aspect of food, are they? They mainly want things that taste good. And I remember this from my own childhood that I was just interested in the way the food tasted and my interest in health came much later. I know a very common strategy is to bribe children with dessert in order for them to eat their food. But the thing that happens when we do that is that we make dessert more interesting and we make food less appealing it actually results in the exact opposite of what we want. If you've been using this strategy for a while, then you might find yourself in a pattern that keeps repeating itself over and over. As a result, your child is less interested in eating food on the plate, more interested in eating sweets and treats, and you're left feeling exhausted and ready to give up. What I have found to work in my family is to cultivate a sense of enjoyment of food and not just for the children but for myself as well. I'm going to show you some ways that I have cultivated enjoyment at the table. But before we get into the tips and the recipes, let's talk about superfoods. Superfoods are more nutrient dense than other foods. And because their nutrition value is so concentrated, only a tiny amount is needed to provide a lot of value. That's why they're so useful for children. All you need is a teaspoon and that can make a huge difference. For example, the beta carotene found in spirulina is 10 times more concentrated than in carrots. Spirulina is an algae that's been called the most nutritionally complete food on the planet. Spirulina contains just about every nutrient known, and it's very bioavailable, meaning it's very easy for the body to absorb and utilize this nutrition. In addition to being super nutritious, spirulina also helps with removing heavy metals from the body, so it's a really efficient detoxifier. The taste can be a little bit off-putting for many kids, but it's easy to disguise the flavor. Then we have something called acai powder. Acai is a fruit that grows in South America, and it's full of antioxidants, anthocyanins, and fatty acids that are really good for a child's growing brain. Just a teaspoon will make a big difference, and the taste is sweet and subtle, 
like a berry taste, so it's quite nice. Then we have rose hip powder. So this has a really high amount of vitamin C, which is really good for the immune system to fight off viruses and infections. So this powder comes from the rose hip flower and food that comes from flowers have the highest vibration. So the really amazing thing about the rose hip bush is that the roots are able to read so far down that it can absorb minerals that other plants cannot reach. And then we have nettles. Nettles have an anti-inflammatory effect that can prevent and alleviate allergies. So it's really good for kids to start early with this, to build their immune system. And just like spirulina, nettles is also a detoxifier. It can remove toxins and purify our blood. And then maca powder. Maca powder is a superfood that your children will most likely eat. It's hardly noticeable, so you could mix it in and disguise it in almost anything. Maca is great for mom and dad too, as it provides a lot of energy and stamina and the ability to handle stress. It's been used for over 2,000 years as a superfood in South America, and it grows in the highest altitude of any other root. Bee pollen is a nutritionally complete food that can sustain you even if it's the only thing you eat. Uh, that's how nutrient dense and concentrated this is. And bee pollen, of course, comes from flowers. So it's another really high vibe food. So bee pollen is considered a wild food because the flowers that the bees are collecting it from, they grow in the wild. And that means that they're not sprayed, they're not cultivated, and this means that they have more power, they have more life force, and they have more stamina, and this is what you get when you eat this. There are so many superfoods to choose from, so you just have to find the ones that work for your family and for your children. So these superfoods can be hidden in all kinds of things, and your children may not even know about it. So you're happy because you know they're getting their nutrition and they're happy because it's not affecting the flavor and you can mix it into smoothies, you can stir it into their porridge, you can sprinkle it over their breakfast or you can put a shaker with their favorite superfood within reach so they can put it on themselves. Next up I want to show you how to make a smoothie using all of these superfoods. And it's not just about the recipe and how to make it, but also about how you're serving it. So let me show you. For this recipe, I'm gonna use two cups of mixed frozen berries. Berries are pretty much like a supplement when it comes to nutrition because they're so loaded with vitamins and minerals and antioxidants. I'm using wild blueberries, raspberries, strawberries, blackberries. Then I'm adding one cup of apple juice. And you can also exchange the apple juice for like orange juice or even green juice. And then I'm adding two cups of frozen banana. And here again, just use the fruit that your child likes. Any kind of creamy fruit like mango, papaya, is great and I like to use it frozen because then it's so creamy and it's so thick and ice creamy and then I'm adding some greens a handful of cilantro and a handful of spinach but if that doesn't work try a mild lettuce like butter leaf or romaine for example and finally the superfoods I'm gonna add as many as I can get away with. So the maca powder and the rose hip powder, I'm just adding a teaspoon of each. Bee pollen, acai. These are all not gonna have a big impact on the flavor. I'm also gonna add a teaspoon of nettles powder and a teaspoon of spirulina.
and then I'm just going to blend that until smooth. My kids love drinking in fancy glasses, so I give them these champagne glasses. When they were toddlers, to reduce plastic, I used leftover jars from pickles and olives. Giving kids cups made of glass, it teaches them to handle them carefully so they don't break. And if they break, it's not a big deal because they're just leftover jars. This recipe is also great to make ice cream. Pour into popsicle molds and just put in the freezer. So you have all of that nutrition in the ice cream and in the smoothie. And if you serve that at the dinner table, all you need is for your child to drink that smoothie and you know that he or she is getting all of that nutrition. So instead of focusing on your child's plate and what your child is eating, you're focusing on your child's face. And then move your focus also to your plate. Are you demonstrating to your child what it's like to have a healthy relationship to food by enjoying the vibrant, delicious food on your plate? My job at the dinner table is not to control and scrutinize every bite that goes into my child's mouth. It's rather to eat with as much enjoyment and as much pleasure as I can. Showing my kids that I enjoy healthy foods will have an impact in the long run. Doesn't it sound like what you've been wanting to do this whole time to just sit down and enjoy your dinner? Often we think we need to get involved with every step of the process of our child's eating. But our children don't like to be monitored and told what to do every step of their dinner. Considering the way that standard diets look in this world today, there's probably more nutrition in that smoothie or in that popsicle than in a whole plate of food. So you can just relax and know your child is getting all of that concentrated goodness, even if they don't finish their whole plate. Another cool thing you can do with this recipe is to make fruit roll-ups. So I'm gonna take any leftover smoothie that I have Pour out on a baking tray lined with parchment paper or a silicone mat. Spread it out thinly and evenly and then bake in 170 degrees Fahrenheit or 80 degrees Celsius for a few hours until it's set and pliable. And this is going to become a chewy delicious fruit leather similar to chewy candy. I'm using a food dehydrator, which is an oven that dries food at low temperature, keeping most of the nutrients intact. If you don't have a food dehydrator, it's fine to use an oven. Dark leafy greens are so important for children. They are so full of minerals and they have so many alkalizing properties in them that are really great for growing strong bones and to knock down food allergies. But they're quite bitter tasting and not every child is used to eating raw spinach and raw kale. So the perfect solution is to make green chips. Even my children's friends who are really picky eaters, they all love these chips. 
Introducing green chips is a really great way to educate your child's palate to getting used to eating greens. The earlier we introduce greens to our children's life, the better. So when it comes to the leaves, I'm using a mix of dinosaur kale, flat leaf kale, and curly leaf kale. I'm also using basil. There are so many different leaves that you can use for this recipe. And even if your child doesn't like basil, for example, you can try it because the taste is completely different once these chips are baked. Uh, when making kale chips, it's important to remove the stem. So the best way to do that is to just pull it like this. Can you help me? And just pull it like that. But the last part doesn't go It's on. okay, honey. The, the ah. last part is fine. Doesn't matter. Stems we can actually save and we can use for green juice. There's so many mineral salts inside the stems that are really valuable. So just keep those. Okay, are you ready to make the sauce for the kale chips? Mm -hmm. Straining these sesame seeds, they've been soaking for about four hours, and now we're gonna strain and rinse them. We're gonna add the sesame seeds. Do you wanna add those? Yes, please. You can use this if you need. So now we can add one bell pepper. All of these? Yeah, uh, all of them. Just add, this is one whole bell pepper going in. And this is half a cup of water. One tablespoon of lemon juice. One tablespoon of toasted sesame oil. And then we're gonna add salt. We're adding about half a tablespoon of salt. Great. And now we're just gonna blend that. Right, now for the fun part, just the bowl that you cleaned so beautifully, we're going to pour that in there. And now you can pour the sauce on top of the kale.
Again, I'm using a food dehydrator, which takes a bit longer, but the chips will retain more of the nutrition. In a regular oven, bake on 150 degrees Celsius or 300 degrees Fahrenheit for about 20 minutes or until crispy. Watch closely at the end as they can easily burn. So I'm going to start with one cup of tahini. Oh, will you help me? Okay, so one cup of tahini. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to add a quarter cup of honey. Will you mix that? This? Yeah. Another quarter cup of apple cider vinegar. Using half a cup of toasted sesame oil. And a third of a cup of coconut aminos. So instead of coconut aminos, you could use soy sauce but uh, then use a little bit less because soy sauce is more salty. Look at that, perfect. This sauce, it tastes exactly like peanut sauce, but there's no peanuts in, it's just sesame seeds. So people who are allergic to peanuts can eat this and sesame seeds are really high in calcium that's very bioavailable. So it's a really good thing to include in your child's diet. Remember that time when I tried to force you to eat beetroot? Mm -hmm. Did that make you like beetroot more? Or did no, you... it made us like it. It made us like it less. Yeah. You too? Mm -hmm. Why did you decide to be vegetarian? Um, one, because you're doing it. You're doing vegetarian. Okay. <laughs> two, you could live longer in my island. Three, I was healthy. What about you, honey? Why do you be, want to be vegetarian? Because, um... Yeah, I think it's healthier. Do you think it's important to eat healthy or you don't really care? Or it's what important. Do you, why? What I, I, you know what I said before? Uh-huh. That's the thing. That's what I think about. Because you could live longer? What if some people don't want to eat? the food that their parents made for them, what do you think the parents should do? Put something I like in the food. Oh, mix it with something they like, yeah? I think, you know, sometimes you don't like something the first time you try it, but maybe if you try it more times, then you'll like it, right? If you, for example, didn't like tomatoes, but then you tried it a year later, then you liked it. Mm -hmm. You think so? Guys, can I ask you something? Ken and Aiden. What about when your parents? What if your kids don't want to eat vegetables? What are you going to do? Well, um, put in it. Mm hmm. Hopefully, they like eating. I mean, dressing. Oh, yeah. Hopefully, you can make like a sauce that they like or dressing. Mm -hmm. What was your favorite thing on the whole table? Cucumber? Pickle? What about you? Yeah. What did I eat? Oh yeah, my favorite one on the table? Let me try to start with this. Do you know why it's good to eat alkaline food? Can I just bone straw? Yeah. And also, 
then viruses can't live inside you. I have a few more tips that I would like to share with you about healthy food for kids. I think one of the most valuable and efficient tools we have as parents is our children's thirst and hunger. If our kids are not hungry enough, it doesn't matter what you do, then they're not going to be interested in eating the food that you're giving them. So just wait for the moment when their hunger kicks in and that's the time when you're going to give them something healthy. For example, when my kids are running around and playing soccer, I know that they're really thirsty. So that's the time when I try to bring them green juice because it's not that interesting for them at other times, but when they're really thirsty, they love to drink it. Another thing that I like to do is to compliment my children on how good they are at eating fruits and vegetables. And so I'll say things like, you're so good at eating vegetables. Not many kids can eat that. I'm so proud of you and things like that. And if you repeat that, pretty soon it's going to turn into reality. Another tip is to keep healthy food in eyesight. So buy an abundance of fruits and vegetables and keep them handy in the refrigerator or on the kitchen counter, just in their eyesight. Just by keeping the counter and the fridge stocked with things that you would like them to eat, their palate will expand and they'll be able to try new things. My last tip is to not give up. If your child doesn't like something, it's good to know that it takes at least 10 times for your child to know if they like a food or not. So don't give up on the first try. Keep introducing this food again and again and your child might develop a liking for it. My suggestion is to keep trying but not forcing. So it's patience rather than pressure. So the recipes that I've shown you today, there's absolutely no downside to including them in your child's diet. Whether you're vegan or pescatarian, omnivore, it's just gonna be a positive addition. I hope this was helpful and thank you so much for joining me again and I look forward to seeing you again next week. The thing is, we're not alone. We never really have been. My gosh! We're all going against the wind. The wind's 120 knots to the west. Oh, I'll take that. And this reality isn't what we think it is. These beings want us to know that our existence is much more than these physical bodies. That we are all one with everything. And what we do to each other, we do to ourselves. Our planet is moving into a part of space that is exposing us to much higher frequencies of galactic energy. This is causing the severe weather changes we are seeing. Increased earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, and end time madness. It's only going to get worse. Eventually, this galactic energy will lead to a pole shift in solar flash, which will be a real wake-up call for humanity. Ultimately, this will be a good thing for us, but it's not going to feel like it at the time. We can have a more positive experience if we can raise our vibration quickly enough to match that of our planet moving through this high vibratory field of space. And that is exactly what this class is all about. 
kindness, compassion, forgiveness, acceptance, selflessness, love, service to others. These are all the things that will raise our vibration.